Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Saru Briley. I'm all the way from Australia, and I'm so ecstatic to be here, and, uh, and I want to tell you my story, um, my odyssey. Um, I'd like to start 25 years ago, 26 years ago, actually. Um, I was uh, five years of age and living in India, in the slums uh, of one of the towns, and, uh, and uh, I had a family. Um, I had two brothers, a sister and a mother, and I hardly ever got to see my brothers um, and my mother because they was always working, trying to find food, trying to um, basically just live day by day. And, uh, and my father, he left us uh, when my sister was born, when she was three years of age, and, uh, and so I hardly ever got to see him. 25, 26 years ago, um, I was uneducated. I didn't go to school. Um, I didn't really know how to spell my name. I didn't know my last name. Um, my vocabulary was very short. Um, I probably only knew about 15 words. And, uh, and, and I roamed most of uh, my hometown, just uh, looking for food, um, begging, um, trying to find food wherever it may be, whether it's on the ground, whether it's peanuts or leftover food. And, uh, and, and did a lot of uh, searching and walking through streets um, looking at different, uh, just basically trying to stimulate my mind instead of being home and looking after my sister. Um, one day when all my family was together, my two brothers, my sister, myself and my mother, during the night, um, we all came together and we uh, were all talking. Um, my brother decided to leave our um, house and uh, I decided I wanted to go with him. Um, I hardly ever got to see him, so I thought this was a great opportunity to uh, just cling on to him, even though he was my favourite brother, um, and, and just do what he did. And uh, instead of being by myself all the time and just roaming around the streets, I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity that uh, I should go with him and see what he did, um, and where he went, where he slept, uh, the people that he met. And so, uh, I asked him, I want to go with you. I don't want to stay here anymore looking after my sister because somehow it just wasn't stimulating. I was getting bored, um, just walking around and looking after her. It sort of didn't really stimulate me. So um, I asked him, can I go with him? And he said, yes, come with me. And uh, we got on his bike and, uh, and rode down to the nearest uh, train station. We got on a train there and uh, went down uh, about an hour down to the next train station and it was about nine o'clock at night and uh, and I was feeling very tired because I had been walking around everywhere uh, for ages and ages but um, I didn't really care about that I just wanted to be my brother and that's it so uh, we got off the train um, at the station which was an hour down from my home station and uh, and uh, I was feeling very tired very groggy um, sort of a uh, um, just wanting to really go to sleep and, um, and there was a seat in front of us uh, when we got off the train um, and I said look uh, I'm just going to sit down here uh, for a second and my brother said yep no probs just sit down um, I'll be back in a minute. I thought that was okay and, uh, and uh, at the same time I thought well I'll just go to sleep on this seat and hopefully when my brother comes back um, he'll, he'll wake me up and we'll go off and, and do something or find a place to sleep. And, um, and so I went to sleep and it w might have been an hour, might have been two hours, might have been 30 minutes. I don't know how long it was, but um, uh, I woke up feeling really sleepy, really hazy, dispositioned, uh, very groggy and uh, not very alert. So when I woke up, I thought, you know, what's going on? You know, where's my brother? I don't know where he is. And I stood up and I sort of looked around and, uh, and I couldn't see him at all. So I thought um, it sort of was a spontaneous decision that uh, I thought, well, there's the train, perhaps he's on the train. So I decided, well, I'll get on the train hoping he's somewhere in those carriages. And, and so I did. Um, and I walked down and I had a look in some of the carriages and, uh, and he wasn't there. So I thought, well, perhaps he's in the other carriage just sweeping around, trying to find some food and some money that people have sort of dropped underneath the seats. Um, I sat down and just went to sleep. And uh, the reason I went to sleep was that, well, perhaps, you know, when he comes back up, 
he'll just pick me up and, uh, and take me wherever um, we wanted to go. It must have been about uh, 11, 12, maybe 14 hours I was asleep on the train, not realising where it was taking me. A sort of a ghost train that was taking me to uh, somewhere um, alienating, just away from you know, my kind of boundaries where I wouldn't go myself or with my brothers. And so um, uh, and after 14, uh, about 14 hours, I wake up on the train and there was no one on it. I ran up and down. Uh, back and forth, try to open doors, but I couldn't. I started crying because I didn't know where my brother was. I you know, I'd start crying because uh, I wanted my brother and my mother, and uh, and, and you know, it was just uh, it was just a, such an emotional time that uh, I just uh, I didn't really know what to do. It was like I just felt like I was a prisoner on this train that was taking me to somewhere uh, in the unknown. Um, after crying for. Ages and ages, I sat down and uh, just looked out into the, um, uh, the fields uh, where the train was uh, hurtling at uh, um, 60, 70 k's an hour. And, uh, and I just decided, you know, there's no point in crying anymore. And uh, after that, I think I went to sleep again because, uh, um, because the stress and the trauma was so great that uh, it just put me to sleep again. And when I woke up, Later on, um, I was uh, coming into this huge train station, which I've never been before, which had railroads going every direction that you could ever uh, imagine. The doors opened when the train stopped, and uh, that was almost a salvation itself because I wanted to get out, and, uh, and a whole heap of people started hurtling in. I managed to slip through and, uh, and ended up uh, amongst thousands and thousands of people in this train station that I'd never been to. I was only about a metre high and, uh, and being pushed aside and uh, left, right, uh, everywhere. Um, but at the same time, I just didn't know where I was. I started crying again. I was asking for help for people, but no one helped me. Um, no one wanted to know me. It, it felt like that, you know, um, when I asked and cried for help that, you know, well, who are you? You're just another kid that's just down the street there. Um, people couldn't understand me. I tried to talk to people in Hindi um, with the, the limited um, knowledge and uh, vocabulary that I had, but uh, everyone was just, uh, it, it was just like, well, you're just another kid. We want to do what we want to do and get that train and, uh, you know, you can go somewhere else. For days and days I stayed at the platforms in Calcutta um, trying to find my way back home. I caught trains um, that took two hour journey, three hour journeys, but every time that I tried to catch a train thinking that if I caught another train it would take me back to my hometown. And you know, you can understand the primitive mentality that I had at the time. And so, you know, for a whole week I tried to catch a train. Um, to take me back to my hometown, but none of them ever did. Every time I did, after an hour or two hours, it came to a dead end and I had to catch a train back. Sometimes I caught a train during the midday, sometimes um, it was sort of in the afternoon. And uh, being in the afternoon, catching a two to three hour train with a return trip because I ended up in a dead end, it sometimes stopped at a train station where it was, uh, there was no one there and I sort of decided just to get off and thought, you know, well, I can't go anywhere. There is uh, really no house, now salvation, nowhere. So I decided, well, I'll just sleep underneath the seats. So when people uh, came across, whether uh, just to keep out of danger, that no one would see me, um, just in the in the shadow of darkness there. After a whole week of just uh, trying to catch my, uh, catch trains back, um, it never works, and uh, and I came to a point where I must let go of this and move forward. And so I decided I'll stop doing that, um, trying to catch trains and start venturing out. So I decided to go to the banks of the Hooghly River where the Howrah Bridge is and start looking there and just fossing around. Um, I saw a, a bunch of kids playing down on the water there and decided, well, you know, let's have some fun. I, I think I smell a bit. I might go down there and have a shower and play with the kids. So I went and ventured down and uh, being a little kid, I made friends pretty easily. So uh, at that point in time, I started playing with the kids and uh, we were just jumping in uh, from uh, steps down into the water and uh, everyone was splashing, having a good time. 
The one thing I didn't realise, I didn't understand what tides were and, uh, and what tidal uh, sort of meant. And because we're having so much fun for hours and hours, um, uh, later on I jumped in not realising that, um, well, one, number one, I can't swim, I don't know how to swim. And also at the same time there was a rip going through too. So when I jumped at this point of time in, um, I couldn't feel the bottom and, uh, and I started to struggle and uh, I started to go down and up and uh, I must have done this for about, uh, you know, three to four times and, uh, and, and the last time I took a deep breath and I thought that was it and, uh, and I was going to die and, uh, and I was starting to go down and I could see the light just dimming and dimming further I went down. Lo and behold, um, I couldn't believe this, but uh, somehow somebody had jumped in and, uh, and rescued me and pulled me out of the, the, the Hoogley River and took me back up to the top of the banks, laid me down and water came out of my mouth and, and a whole heap of people started to surround to see what was going on. Um, I got up and, uh, and I was sort of scared. I was okay and uh, I was scared because there was a whole heap of people you know, surrounding me and I thought, oh no, I better go. And, uh, and I just ran off and, uh, and, and didn't want to be a major attention, you know, because I was scared of the police, I was scared of people, I didn't want to let too many people know who I was. Um, and so what happened there, I, I ran off and, uh, and just left everything behind. And, you know, luckily for me, I didn't drown. So after that, I decided, uh, uh, well, I'll, you know, keep on venturing around. And I thought, you know, um, uh, just uh, I walked all over the place, you know, for days and days and days. And one day I decided I'll just go uh, back to the train station and start walking around the, the uh, multitude of uh, train uh, uh, railway lines and, uh, and, and see, you know, where that sort of will get me. Um, so I was walking along these dangerous railway lines where you had trains hurtling through, speeding at the rate of knots, and, uh, and a man came up to me and he said, uh, look, what are you doing here? He had a pick, uh, and he sort of looked like a railway worker, and, um, and, and, uh, and he said to me, oh, look, come with me, I will try and help you find your way home. So uh, I went back with him to his uh, place, which was on the side of the railroad, and he said, oh, look, where are you from? I told him what I could, and he said, well, let's uh, try and help you out. Uh, tomorrow, he's, he said he's got a friend that will come over and try and help your way back to your, your home place. Uh, he gave me some food and we uh, stayed there for a little bit. And, uh, and the next day when his friend came over, um, he said, uh, look, talk to him, tell what you know and he may be able to help you. So um, I told him my story. He told me, oh, sit next to me, lie next to me and tell me a story about, you know, where you're from and we see where we can go. So. Uh, at that point in time, I sort of got a real funny feeling about this guy because it was sort of unusual for to sit down, um, actually lie next to a guy and tell him about, you know, your past and where you've been. And so a gut feeling told me that this isn't right and uh, I decided, well, you know, um, great that you can help me, but the thing about it is that um, I'm going to sort of... Uh, uh, um, probably run away and not ever come back because I don't think this is right. So I left the place and uh, ran away and uh, went to uh, somewhere else across the other side of the Hoogley River. And, um, and uh, after, after getting um, spotted by ESA, which is Indian Society of Sponsorship and Adoption, um, they took me in and sponsored me out to, uh, well, adopted me out to an Australian family in Australia. Uh, which was John and Sue Briley. Um, I was educated there for a uh, um, number of years and did my degree, um, but the thing about it all is that I had the um, photographic memory of my family and uh, everyone's name. So I decided to think, well, how am I going to get back home? And uh, Google Earth came, and uh, because I had a photographic memory, I started to use Google Earth and started uh, sort of fussing around everywhere um, trying to look for this needle in a haystack. Lucky for me, um, through years and years and years of searching on it, I actually found it and, uh, and I decided to uh, try and get a ticket, which I did a year after, and, uh, and, uh, and, and to try and find this place that I've seen on Google Earth, which 
I sort of looked the same image as it did on Google Earth. So when I went back um, to Madhya Pradesh, um, the place that I found was called Kanwa. Um, I got there and, uh, and decided to go straight back to um, the family home and see if the, my family's still there. But they weren't there and so um, um, a couple of people came up and asked me, you know, what are you doing? And I said, oh look, I'm trying to find my family. Um, these are the pictures of me when I was little, can you help me? So one person came up and said, okay, well, just wait here for a second, I'll uh, be back in a minute. So he went off, after five minutes he came back and he said, I'm going to take you to your mother. And, uh, and I couldn't believe it, I just thought, you know, what's going on here? So uh, we walked 15 metres around the corner and there was three ladies standing in front of the entrance of a doorway. Um, the first one I didn't recognise, the third one I thought, yeah, there's something about you. Um, and, and the third one I thought, oh no, you're, you're not it. So I went to the, uh, looked at the second one and the second lady stepped forward, she hugged me, she cried, and the internal emotions that, uh, that was you know, happening at the time, it was just so great that I can't really, really explain. I was uh, sort of you know, uh, gobsmacked and it's just like, you know, to my mother, it was just like, well, uh, ghost has reappeared, where have you been all this time? And uh, the triumph of it all, you know, and, and the tragedy that I found uh, was my older brother who died a month later after I disappeared. And so that was really disappointing. Uh, but in regards to my family, everyone was healthy and safe. My family, uh, uh, mother, uh, she was still working and, uh, and she looked pretty bright. And my sister, she had been married, so was my brother. And, uh, and I had nieces and nephews. So once that happened, the, um, there was a big global news. Um, people uh, and media in India started, you know, um, be, trying to... Uh, well, people in India all came to Kanwa, my hometown, to find out, you know, the big story that had happened. And uh, it, the story just went global and, uh, it, and uh, I just feel so humbled about the whole thing and touched that there are a lot of people out there that love my story and, uh, and, and I'm you know, so overwhelmed. Uh, my life now is just, uh, I just, I'm so humble about it, so touched. It's, uh, it's so surreal that everything that's happening at the moment, it's, uh, it's just unbelievable. Um, I've got uh, a book deal and a movie deal and, uh, and hopefully the only thing that I really uh, want to project to people and everyone in the world is that uh, everyone out there that's ever had trouble trying to find their family or wanted to ever find their family is that I hope they could use my tactics. Um, I wish this book and uh, movie that comes out and people read it, that in it empowers people. It, uh, it empowers them in a way that, you know, they can use my tactics if they ever wanted to try and reach their family or see them again. Thank you very much.